Thank you, Gail, for that special blessing. By God's infinite wisdom, he inspired the psalmist to write in Psalm 118 from his infallible word, hear God's word. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. You are my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Shall we combine our voices together and sing, Holy, 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 213. Shall we stand, please? together. Heavenly Father, you've heard our combined voices sing praise unto you in awe of your holiness, and rightly so. But now we come before you with open hearts in prayer, individually and collectively. And Father, you know everyone who is here by name. You know where we're sitting you know what is upon our minds and our hearts as we entered this place of worship. And you, Father, know how to meet our every need in a life-changing way. So we welcome your presence. We welcome your blessing. And we thank you above all for the freedom that we have to come together in the matchless saving name of Jesus Christ. And all believers joined and said together, Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Let's do some uh, shake, rattling, and rolling. Turn and look at somebody with a smile on your face and say, howdy, howdy. Well, you did that very well. Thank you. All right, now I do want to thank uh, John DiBercio, Bob Straub, 
and Harold Bodine, they've been striping our parking lot. So that means when you see white lines, you're supposed to park in between the lines. Not on the lines, not near the lines, in between the lines. All right, very good. Choir is practicing right after church today. If you'd like to join our choir, you're more than welcome to do that. And then tonight is our book club beginning again. And so you're all welcome to join that. Wednesday nights, we're meeting downstairs now because we've well, grown our area initially. And uh, so if you want to come and join us, Wednesday night, we're downstairs with a study booklet. And we're looking at God's promises to us believers for our difficult days. Then we have our special church meetings coming up, our quarterly meetings. One is for the church family. Everybody is invited to our church meetings. We never have any secrets to hold, so you're welcome to join us. And then our uh, following Sunday is our Sunday school meeting as well. And two other announcements, and then I'm done. Shoebox! We're running out of time now. Collection is November. When's it? The first week of November, I think. Everything you need to know is right inside. We just need lots and lots and lots and lots of boxes. We'd like to have at least 125 or more. So if you know folks that uh, are not even of our church, that would like to help children have a good time for Christmas, but above all, hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in whatever native, native language they are in, uh, that's the real purpose of that. And then uh, finally, the last Sunday of this month, I've just been informed we're having a Harvest Blessings Luncheon. We'll have a bulletin uh, insert next week to sign up right after church. Uh, the adults are $5. Children are two fifty, so that includes me. <laughs> hey, whatever. So just look forward to that, please. Those are all the announcements I need to make at this time. Let's worship the Lord with our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
Thank you, Lori. Shall we stand and sing our doxology together, please? With thankful hearts, Heavenly Father, we bring forth unto you these blessings that you have provided for us. We pray that someone will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and our brothers and sisters in Christ will be edified through this ministry, through the giving of these gifts, which we dedicate to you in the loving name of Jesus Christ. And all believers joined and said together, Amen. Amen. Now, as we go to prayer together, there's just a few names I want to bring to our attention. Any names that are not mentioned publicly does not mean they're not important. Important, they are to the Lord and they should be to us as well. Uh, Charlotte Steep is going to be undergoing some surgery uh, in a few weeks, but she's with us and we're good to, glad to see her. Uh, Judy Longmire is also undergoing treatment for her difficulties, and Bunny Corson is still recovering from her difficulties, as is Jean Pizzetti. Bob and Cheryl Green are also having a variety of different issues, but uh, they appreciate our prayers and our, your cards so very much, and Fraser Allberger is doing much better as well. Now we want to pray for Alice Longmire, she is one of eight children, and her brother is just passed away, went home to be with the Lord, and that just leaves Alice. And uh, his name is Alvis Faust. Did I get it right? I didn't Wednesday night, that's why. I, okay. Very good, Alice. So our prayers for Alice. Uh, I'm glad that he's with the Lord, but we'll miss him here. Our missionary for the week, Stephen Sandy Murad, Ruth Bodine's brother and sister-in-law. Uh, they serve the Lord full-time in Nairobi through the Africa Inland Mission. So let's keep praying for them. Uh, that the Lord will use them mightily in Nairobi. Let's look to the Lord together in prayer, and you pray for a few moments privately, silently, and then I'll ask you to join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we sang in our opening song, Holy are you, almighty God, Heavenly Father, who alone deserves praise and adoration and honor and glory, not only with our voices, not only with our thoughts, but with our hearts. How great and mighty and wonderful you are, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful, everywhere present, overflowing with grace and mercy, love and forgiveness. So, Father, you have given us every desire, every reason to just praise you. Father, as we examine our own lives under the presence of God the Holy Spirit, we're mindful that of our many blessings, we are mindful that you call us in your word to just obey you, to resist temptation, to tell Satan to flee, and you promised that he will. But there are times, Father, when we give in to temptation and yield to Satan's way, and so in thought, word, or attitude, or action, we grievously sin against you, and when we do, Father, we do not deserve your forgiveness, and yet we know by your grace 
and your love. You desire for us to confess, repent of our sins, and then to claim your precious promise of cleansing. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the many who are going through a time of illness, a time of sorrow, a time of difficulty of all manners, and we know, Father, that you're the master of every storm in which individuals find themselves. You are sovereign. You are mighty. You are overruling. How glad we are to live in a land of freedom, a land flawed by disruption and chaos. And yet, Father, you're the sovereign God of this nation. This nation is of your blessing. And we seek to be obedient to your blessing. We pray for our leaders in obedience to your word. We pray for our people in obedience to your word. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are suffering because of Jesus Christ in obedience to your word. And we pray for those who are spiritually lost, trying to find hope and joy everywhere but where it can only be found, which is in you. We pray that they'll come to salvation this day. And then in obedience to your word, we will join the angels in heaven and rejoice over the salvation of yet another. Thank you for Steve and Sandy Murad and their faithfulness in Nairobi. And we know that they've encountered many dangers in serving you and you've protected them. And we ask that you continue to use them in a mighty way in Nairobi amongst those souls that you love so much. We believe your word to be true, Heavenly Father, that teaches us that Jesus Christ died upon the cross, was buried, rose again, and is coming again. And we are so grateful that he came to live among us, be born of a virgin, just to save us. How we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the joy of knowing Jesus Christ and the blessed hope that lies within us. In his precious, wonderful name we pray together and all believers joined and said together, Amen. Let's stand and sing meaningfully from our hearts unto the Lord. 404. And sing it like you mean it, please. Jesus is all the world to me. Let's stand and sing together.
Thank you. Please be seated. This is our selective opportunity to reach out to people in need. We don't collect money for the sake of collecting money. We tell you where every penny goes because you should know that. This offering only helps our elders and myself to help people who have legitimate needs. And if you desire to help people in the same way, we would ask that you give above all prayerfully, lovingly, and as generously as you can. With that in mind, let us receive our fellowship offering. Pray together, Heavenly Father, we know that the needs are real and great, and you have called us to be part of your meeting those needs through these gifts, which we bring forth to you and dedicate them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And all believers join us said together, Amen. Amen. Now, would you open your copy of God's infallible word, please, to the Gospel of Matthew. Easy enough for you to find, that's for sure. And we're going to look in a moment or so at verse 9. And keep in mind, whenever we look at a single verse or a group of verses, chapter of a, of a book in the Bible or all of one book or more of God's infallible word. It's God's word. This is not Matthew's opinion. This is what really happened. When Jesus Christ said to Matthew, follow me. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And Jesus Christ said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. May God add his blessing upon this, the reading of his holy word. Heavenly Father, we certainly thank you for our Savior, but we thank you that he called Matthew to follow you. And now, Father, you are calling each of us to this day to follow you. We pray that our minds and our hearts will be in obedience 
to your command to follow you. We pray for anyone watching over the internet or around the world or over television or in any place in this facility who may not know Jesus Christ as his or her personal Savior, that this hour, yea, this moment, will be the time of eternal salvation for that soul that you love so much. We humbly ask this prayer by faith and with complete trust in the wonderful, matchless, saving name of Jesus Christ. And all believers join and said together, Amen. Amen. In this passage of scripture in God's inerrant word, we see a man called Matthew whose life was totally changed. When Jesus Christ looked into his eyes, I believe, and he said, Matthew, follow me. If you don't know anything about Matthew, let me just give you a thumbnail sketch of his life. He was a hated man. Carolyn and I have been audited twice by the IRS. We know what that's like. And uh, it's detailed. They do not play games. And uh, they audited us for giving too much money to the church. Nobody gives that much money. <laughs> I wish it were as much as you think it is, but at any rate... So I know what it's like, we know what it's like to sit under the, the scope of the IRS. Well, Matthew was a tax collector in his day. So he wasn't loved by anybody. Now, he was Jewish by birth, fully Jewish. But he worked as a tax collector for the Roman government who hated the Jews, as governments still do today, as God said they would. So Matthew is being paid by the enemy to collect taxes for the enemy. And here's how it worked with the Roman government. They said, Matthew, you're a Jew. You are to collect the taxes from every Roman citizen in the empire, including the Jews. But Matthew, because you're Jewish, here's the deal. You collect all the taxes from the Roman citizens who are Gentiles, but when it comes to the Jewish people, you collect the money from them that's owed to the Roman government, and then you add your own tax to it, whatever you want it to be. So, not real figures here, but let's just say the Roman government said, Matthew, collect $100 from every Roman citizen, and then if you want to collect another $100 for your own pocket, feel free to do it. And that's what he did. So he was hated by the Roman government because he was Jewish. He was hated by the Jews because he was unfairly treating them. To this hated man, Jesus Christ said, follow me. So let's look what's involved in following Jesus Christ much more than what I'm going to share with you this morning, but it certainly involves complete commitment. Complete commitment. It was for Matthew. He had to make a commitment. Serve the Roman government? Make money for myself? Or serve this one that I've heard about, never saw before? And he said, follow me. And Matthew did. That's complete commitment. Years ago, Carolyn and I used to take every year our teenagers on a year, a week-long retreat, different parts of the land, down to Florida, Pennsylvania, and New England, down the shore. And uh, when we would go on this week-long trip to help spare the cost of it all, we would ask for our families to donate food, uh, prepared food. So all we had to do was warm it up. Well, uh, on one of these trips, Beck on, Buck and Ethel Pearson, who before they went to be with the Lord, had a farm market on Laurel Road. And uh, they were involved in our ministry. And they said to me, 
we're going to give you a bushel of string beans. And I thought, okay. And so I took it along, and I, you know, some of the kids loved it, but most of the kids did not. And it got to the point where we were running out of time to finish these string beans, and I wasn't about to tell Buck and Ethel that we didn't eat all the string beans. So I said to each kid, look, I will personally give each of you a dollar if you eat a plate full of string beans. Well, that's all it took. In those days, a dollar was a big deal. And the kids gobbled those string beans up. Now, the kids kept their commitment, yes, we will. But what, happened, what would happen if I then said after they ate all the string beans, nah, changed my mind, sorry, no dollar. I wouldn't be standing here today. I would be strung up somewhere. Complete commitment. God expects us. When we sing the hymns, trust and obey, and all the different hymns that we sing, God's listening. And when, if we're believers and we know Jesus Christ is our Savior and we're singing, trust and obey, God's saying, I expect you to trust and obey because you sang it, you said it, you thought it. That involves complete commitment. And that involves every day complete commitment because you don't know about tomorrow. You don't know about this afternoon, neither do I. I can stand in this pulpit and, and say, let's completely obey God and go home or go somewhere and find a situation where it's gonna, God's going to say, okay, let's see if you're truly committed or committed to me. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. The Apostle Paul said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That involves complete commitment. It also involves, number two, absolute obedience. Absolute obedience. When Jesus Christ said to Matthew, follow me, Matthew didn't say to Jesus Christ, well, okay, Lord, but first I have to give the government two weeks notice to quit this job as a tax collector. No, he immediately dropped everything and followed Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So God says, I want each of you to follow me, but it involves complete commitment it involves absolute obedience to my word. No matter what happens. God has a plan for each of us. There are some days that we wonder about that because we can't see the plan. We don't understand what's going on. God, what's, why is this happening to me? But Jeremiah 29, 11 teaches us that God says, my plans I have for you are for your good not to harm you. That requires absolute obedience. Yes, Lord. Jesus Christ said it best, Luke chapter 22, verse 42, not my will, but your will be done. And there are times that I don't want to do God's will, and God knows it, and then he speaks to my heart, not your will, but mine be done. And I have found that every time that I disobey that and go after my own will, I don't make out so well. Sometimes your pastor has to learn the hard way. And God's very good at that. My mother always used to say, Davy, you can learn the easy way or you can learn the hard way. It's your choice, but you will learn. Unfortunately, I didn't get the last part of that, and I had to learn the hard way. I never repeated my brother's mistakes. I learned that, but I made my own mistakes. Absolute obedience, and then number three, complete commitment, absolute obedience, personal sacrifice. Personal sacrifice. Matthew 
was a wealthy man. He was making big bucks, as you can imagine. The Roman Empire was bigger than America. So the citizens were really uh, multitudes. And then there was all the Jewish people. And if whatever amount of money he charged, he was putting it in his own pocket. And he gave it all up. Now, I'm not by any means saying that God's calling you to follow him, to give up whatever source of income you have. Uh, no, I'm not saying that at all. Don't misunderstand me. But he is saying, I want you to make a personal sacrifice. Whereby, if you have choices, you're saying, well, this is what I'd like to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I need to do. But above all, I need to do what God wants me to do. And that might involve a sacrifice. That might mean telling your family or telling your friends you're going to do something else other than what they want you to do. And you might get ridiculed, but that's a personal sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. God speaks about that. He says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, whenever you see that word brethren, that's you and me or who are born again with God's Holy Spirit. So this is for us, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. That involves personal sacrifice. And then Jesus Christ himself spoke to personal sacrifice in following him. In Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 24, then Jesus Christ said to his disciples, now this is you and me. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must de deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? That's written to believers. Certainly the unbelievers are chasing after fun and pleasure and, and whatever it is that the security in this world alone. Last week was our anniversary and we went down, for those on Wednesday night who feared that I was being serious about not having the gift and all the cards and everybody was trying to be so, unhelp, so helpful by telling me, well, the Dollar store is still open. You can still have time to get there. That, that was just a shtick. We, uh, we, anyway, we were down in Cape May, and, and where we love to eat at the Lobster House, there was a free advertisement. Uh, the inner harbor there, these magnificent yachts. And we were looking at them, and they, they're, they're incredible. Uh, each one of them can sink. People who think things are going to give me security, it's not there. So God is saying to us believers, your security is in him. Follow him. Now, if anyone doesn't know Jesus Christ as a Savior, God makes it so simple for us to be saved. We are the ones, we human beings, we're the ones that complicate everything, not God. He just creates the rose to be enjoyed, not to be dissected and 
you know, all the nonsense that is going on with denying God and his creation. And he says, all I want you to do is come to me by faith like a child. You know what children, isn't it? Children, aren't they wonderful? That, given day, I know, I know. But, but they're just so trusting. Why are you doing that? Mommy told me to. Why? Mommy told me to. Why? Because daddy will kill me if I don't. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> That's all God says. I want you to, A, admit to me, acknowledge to me that you are a sinner. And you may not sin like someone else sins, but you're still a sinner. And the Bible actually says, if you don't think you're a sinner, you're a fool, because you are a sinner. And now that you've acknowledged that to God, what are you going to do about it? God says, well, all I want you to do is believe that you need to be saved. B. A, B, C's. Just believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And then C, invite Jesus Christ to come and save your soul. It's that simple. Isn't it beautiful, God's grace? A, B, C's. So if you've never invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior, Jesus Christ is here right now saying, follow me. Maybe you're saying, but I'm a believer. I've been a believer for a long time. At one point in your life, even if you were a child, you were not a follower of Jesus Christ. And he kept saying to you, follow me, follow me. And whenever it was, you finally said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Then as you share the Lord's Supper this morning, God is coming to you again. And he's saying, I know you're my child for all eternity. Your name is written in my Lamb's book of life, in my son's blood. But I, as you share the Lord's Supper, I want you to, I'm saying to each of you, keep following me. And all he wants to hear from us, yes, Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus Christ came down from glory, born of a virgin, so that he might become the one and only sinless sacrifice to pay the penalty for our sins, to redeem us, to set us free. And again, Father, your invitation to anyone is to follow me. May the unsaved say, yes, Lord. May the saved do the same. Yes, Lord, as we share the Lord's Supper together. And we'll thank you, Heavenly Father, for your desire to continue to bless us in a life-changing way. In the name of our wonderful Savior, we pray together, and all of God's people join and said together, amen. As Lori plays for us, let us enter into an attitude of meditation and prayer as we share the Lord's Supper together. As you continue to pray and meditate before the Lord, I remind you today, as I do every Communion Sunday, that this is indeed the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper was not instituted by the disciples, nor by the Church of Jesus Christ. It was instituted by Jesus Christ himself so that we believers might come together and remember individually and collectively what he has done for us, what he is doing for us, what he will do for us as our Lord and Savior and soon coming again King of Kings. You do not need to be a member of our church in order to share the Lord's Supper, but you must proclaim Jesus Christ to be your Savior. The elders nor I will pass that judgment upon you, 
But if you do not proclaim Jesus Christ as your Savior, then I read for you a very severe warning that comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, unsaved, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you have judged the body correctly, and you are cordially invited to share the Lord's Supper with us. Continuing to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Elder Chuck, it's going to lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving. Holy Father, we come before you thankful, grateful for the love you have shown us through Christ. Christ, we come before you thankful for the love you have shown us by offering your body up as a sacrifice for the sins of us. And we thank you that we can partake in this institution that you have given us in remembrance so that we can fellowship together in the love of your salvation. Bless us in the name of Christ. Amen. Of your remembrance of the body of Jesus Christ, which suffered and died as a sinless sacrifice for our sins, let us partake of this bread together.
continuing to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the same way. After supper, he also took this cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Elder Keller is going to come and lead us in our prayer of thanksgiving. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you stated in your perfectly inspired word that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission from sin. So you sent your only begotten Son to shed his blood and die and take on the sins of the world that we might become righteous in you. So, Father, as we partake of this cup, may we always remember Jesus, his love, and his supreme sacrifice to cleanse us from sin. In whose name I pray, amen. loving remembrance of the blood of Jesus Christ which was shed for the remission of our sins let us partake of this cup together if you desire to accept Jesus Christ your personal Savior or to be baptized by immersion the way Jesus Christ was baptized 
You're welcome to make your decision known to us by coming forward as we sing our final hymn together or speak with me after the service. The scriptures tell us that the disciples left that upper room singing a hymn. The Bible scholars tell us it was Psalm 118. We won't sing that psalm, but we will sing in that tradition a song, and you come as you so desire. Shall we stand and sing together, please? Number 73. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your love, forgiveness. Thank you for calling us to follow you. As we leave this place of worship, Heavenly Father, we are going to face individuals, face situations where you are going to call us to follow you. But we dare not be able to do that without your blessings upon us and within us as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May we rejoice over the truth that because Jesus Christ is alive, the best is yet to come. Amen and amen. Amen.